Welcome back to the Robot Brains podcast on the DL, where we take a step away from AI and learn more about our latest guest with 10 quick personal questions. All right, let's dive in. If you could have a robot take over any part of your life, what would you have it do? I actually think the vision of self-driving cars is pretty great. The long-term vision of self-driving cars is pretty great, both from a human safety point of view and how much time I waste on commuting and, and transport. Who has inspired you the most in your career journey? I mentioned Bill Gates early on, um, and I have a lot of mentors. Maybe one of my managers at Facebook is named Stan Chitnovsky. As, uh, I, uh, I learned a lot from just how to, how to build a product that has a, a meaningful impact in the world. Uh, from him. If you could give robots and machines one human value, what would it be? I think one of the most innate human traits is wanting to be heard. Uh, and so I don't know what the hu- the robot, you know, I'm trying to think about what the robot equivalent of like expressing that you're hearing another human is. But I think that is, you know, one of the, when people talk about the difference between robots and humans, that sort of, uh, it's not quite empathy, but but something along along that line. Outside of the world of tech, what excites you most about the current state of the world? I think one thing that's really exciting, I think most people think of this as a negative, is, but I think of it as a positive, is just how much um, general civic engagement there is in the world. A lot of that civic engagement, you know, is because of a bunch of maybe people feel more polarized or have stronger feelings about things. But I actually think net-net over a long term, you know, higher degrees of civic engagement is not a bad thing. I think a lot of the kind of short-term spikiness of this moment will pass, um, but the long-term value of having people understand how the government works is important. If you had to give up work and volunteer for the rest of your life, what would you do and why? I'd probably be like a music teacher or something like that. I play the violin. Uh, I play the violin for... 20 something years now. At some point you stop counting how many years you've played. It's a really big passion and hobby of mine. Um, and I, you know, if I was just volunteering, I would, I would try to share that passion with as many people as possible. What's the last book you read? The last book I read was uh, Avi Loeb's um, by an author called Avi Loeb. Um, he wrote a book called, I think it's called, you know, I don't look at the title. I think it's called Extra- Extraterrestrial. It's a book making the case that we've, uh, we've had, alien contact. Um, and, you know, usually these types of books are written by people with maybe less credentialed. Um, but Avi Loeb is, I think, the chair of the Department of Astrology, I think, at Harvard, at Harvard's Department of Astrology. So, you know, pretty credentialed guy. Uh, and it, very inter- it, it pushes you to think a little bit more beyond what you might otherwise do. So re- highly recommend the book. Best present you've ever received? Probably my violin. Dinner with one person, living or deceased? My grandfather on my father's side. So a quick version of my life story is I I left China when I was uh, about one years old. Uh, And so I I don't have any living memory of him. Uh, He has a living memory of me when he was alive, but he passed uh, before I was ever able to meet him. From what my dad tells me, it sounds like there's a lot that we have in common. (laughs) So it might might be, I I have to take him at face value for that, but would be great. Most overrated virtue? Conformity. I mean, that's a very like Silicon Valley answer, I think. The world's a weird place. There's a lot of variation. It's, it's like, I think people should embrace that more. And I think better things happen when people embrace that more, whether they're in like a business context or in a, in, a, in a relationship or anything. What's something that many people don't know about you? I, I think for, you know, if you, if you look at me on paper, or, you know, even the way some of my, my, my friends perceive me. Uh, I'm like the founder and CEO of, a, I think, pretty interesting startup in Silicon Valley. You know, by some of the other answers, I'm like, kind of like a future focused, like, just kind of move forward, do lots of things type of personality. But at the end of the day, I'm, you know, I think like a pretty calm, boring guy. <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe that, that that's what it is at the end of the day. 